Welcome back to another episode of The Future of Photography. We are back with um, all different colors. Everyone, Everyone. there's Imar, <laughs> there's Adrian, there's Jeremiah. Hello. And uh, good yeah. evening. I like Hello. this is colorful today. I like For this, Adrian. I like your. <laughs> I just, just figured. Just figured I have these RGB lights on me every week, right, when we record this for the YouTube bit, and I never use the colours. Mm -hmm. so, so, so today I'm doing my own teal and orange. That is totally fine. <laughs> teal on one side and orange on the other. It's a great look. <laughs> I, am, I like it. So today it's drone time. By the way, everyone who watched last week's, um, yeah, what was it? Our live lounge, our... Um, I watched. You watched. Yeah, you, you went there. You rewatched it later yeah. on. So if you haven't seen yeah. that, we uh, w we went. I'm doing air quotes here for the listeners who don't watch this. Um, like we went to the photography show and watched some sessions and then talked. And it was a good discussion. I like this. It was a really good one. It had a, had a lot of different angles to it. Not just the contents of the show, but the topic of how we do shows these days. And I really like that. So today mm -hmm. um well is it tech it's partially tech but it's also a it's social tech. kind of thing <laughs> so uh, we want to talk drones and uh we've talked drones here before but um i've called this the impact of drones because well do they impact us in which ways do they impact us so maybe we'll maybe we'll look at some areas where drones are in fact a thing where they exist already where they are being used already um so in our notes i have a whole list of things um surveillance law enforcement right crowd surveillance um f but also fire investigations or other things around that i think that's uh, one of the one of the ways where you don't really get to see them that much, but they are there. I think. Um, mm. I don't think I don't think we want to go very dystopian, though. Um, there are there are other we have the tendency sometimes, but <laughs> I'll try not to. There are other areas where drones are being used. There's mapping, for example. There's lots of high detail aerial imagery that's now being done by drones, because why not? Um, cheaper than airplanes. Uh, I'm not sure we are there yet with with the shipping and the delivery, but there's like pilot projects. I know Amazon and UPS and DHL um, are doing pilot projects there, and we're talking small package delivery. We're talking food um, delivery. We're talking medicine, that kind of thing. Uh, another area. A friend of mine is has a professional drone license in the USA, and he. Um, had some situations where um, where he offered his services for disaster response. Like there's something going on, and you want a, a quick a quick uh, a quick situational assessment. You want to know what's really going on. So without uh, without endangering the rescuers, you can enlarge their their field of view. You can make them see things, or you can go look for victims um you can even put leds on drones and light the scene at night for example mm. um what we hear in the background is not a drone i think that's a proper airplane mm. it's good timing it's good though. Timing. i was just thinking yeah. it's, <laughs> it's jeremiah's airplane um weather they're coming to take you away jeremiah <laughs> <laughs> it's the Fed. They're after you. He wishes. Good reasons. Um, weather is another area that I wasn't aware of. I had to do some research on that one. Um, there's uh, new new insights that are being won through uh, flying drones into hurricanes and tornadoes. Areas that aren't that, well, that used to be the domain of airplanes. But um, that usually means sending people in there. And now they can do this. Uh, with drones, can they do that? Really, do that with drones? Would that? Would you not just lose your drone well, in a hurricane? Well, if you look at a hurricane and you fly a plane in there, that's not that much bigger than most drones. And drones come at, at different sizes. When you say drone, do you mean the tiny pocketable one by DGI, or do you mean the one that is an actual airplane that is uh, autonomous and Ooh. does things? Because well, we should qualify, shouldn't we? And, so, uh, I mean, I think a lot of our listeners would be thinking about photography drones. Oh, yeah, drones. because this is uh. a photography show. But drones are, I mean, anything from toys to, to big surveillance machines to, um, 
delivery vehicles to a lot of things. So what are drones for you? Let me start with Imar. When you hear drone, what's your first thought? <laughs> drone. <laughs> um, when I hear drone, oh, I don't know. I can see now that you're talking about all the kind of disaster relief uses and stuff like that, I can see the application there. When you're talking about the hurricanes, I'm thinking a Twister movie when they sent the... They had this sort of homemade machine that sent up all the sensors. That was a great see, movie. Like, you could sort of disposable drones that would just launch something else into to record data. I can see that. Yeah, mm. that's great. But I don't want his drone delivering Why my not? packages. Thanks very much. Well, it's that human co connection. That you want you, a postman you know, to ring your face doorbell. To face. I want a nice postman to ring my doorbell and say, here, sign for this, please. And yeah, thank you very much. Have a nice day. So so when you order things, you, know? you do this for the... Do, the drone's not going to do, do that for me. Do you order things for the human interaction or for the thing that you want to order? No, I order it for the thing that I want to order. Um, but at the same time, I don't want it to be dropped in my garden mm -hmm, by a drone. Okay. Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> 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 but um <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know i just i think the misuses of them would probably outweigh the good i can see their use and like things like you know clearing minds or just you know t i can totally see the good use case for them but for domestic everyday use and also the photography the aerial photography and the mapping that's amazing um, in my everyday life, I do not want to see a drone mm -hmm. in the sky. I don't want to see Amazon drones everywhere. But but I don't but, want to but see let, that, let me let me no. let me try to let me try to challenge this because um, you're okay with an Amazon truck stopping in front of your house. Um, I'm I'm okay. not really okay with well, Amazon. Amazon DHL whatever. Full stop. Uh, whatever. Okay. We're we're not about um, the company. We're I'm about okay. the delivery. What is different when it flies? You're about the delivery. What is different when it flies? No, I suppose it's probably more cost effective for the company, which is something that mm -hmm. wouldn't be my well, what's concern. What's different for you when it flies consumer. other than you don't have a nice And then postman. I suppose maybe it's a cleaner way to do it as well. Okay, look, can, can't they drive electric vehicles? They do here. And, you know, still deliver my my mail or whatever, my packages. Um, I don't know what's different when it flies. It's faster. Yeah, but but personally for you, I because because I, I I noticed some resistance there, and I'm I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. It's just uh, something mm. that I noticed. Jeremiah, how how about I'm you? Would would, would you resistant. like a drone to deliver a burrito to you? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Why not? I'd I'd rather have less cars on the road. Um, it really depends on how they're managed more than anything. Uh, uh -huh. You know. For for me, uh, like personally, I've got a, a little drone and um, I've had a bigger drone. The little ones I, I kind of like. Um, the problem I have here where I live is I'm I'm now uh, within the kind of airport. <laughs> Five mile radius, yeah. <laughs> ten mile, yeah. And, and, and so it's more, it's like ten, but still um, I can't really fly it around my, mm. my neighborhood. When I fly a drone myself and I'm exploring and taking pictures, I absolutely love it. But if anyone else is doing it, so, I hate it. Because <laughs> I want control over knowing who's who's doing what with that drone to mm. me. Also, they've not really dealt with the noise. Like, yeah. I think if a drone can be quieter, it would mm -hmm. be a little less like a gnat, you know, buzzing around your ear that's that's kind of annoying um that would be the thing that makes a difference to me i if, if, so so if somebody offered me the the choice between a drone delivering my packages or a battery powered truck delivering my packages yeah i would definitely choose the battery powered truck so Yay. here here <laughs> where i live um our dhl driver um she had switched or was switched to an electrical vehicle maybe a half a year ago oh, cool. And the the change was baffling because I could I, I'm here all day normally when I don't do photo workshop these kind, these kind of things so um, and my my window is facing out to the road so whenever I w I would get a DHL delivery 
I could hear it. I could. I would know. Oh, that's THL because the <laughs> diesel sound yeah. was just like very familiar. <laughs> of that, and the, and the door sliding open. It's a Volkswagen <laughs> bus, and it sounds very familiar. It's like, oh yeah, that's DHL. Mm. Um, and then I started not. Uh, and, then, and then they started they had to ring <laughs> at a certain point because i couldn't hear them anymore so that was that was on the one mm. hand unusual but um i got used to that very quickly because it's so much nicer that they don't make any noise and that they don't smell bad mm. so for me the the, the electrification yeah. is one thing um uh, but then on the other end, I I do also fly a small drone, Jeremiah, probably something similar that you have, a small DJI. And um, th from, a, from a photography point of view, and I think that's one of the main usages of drones is um, putting cameras yeah. up, up, up high where you can't usually <laughs> get the cameras easily. Um, or low. Or low. Or, or low. Or, yeah, low but, but, yeah. but moving cameras into places where you can't put them... Uh, easily without something that's flying so and and mm. for cheap comparably cheap i mean if you compare that with uh, hiring a helicopter yeah jeremiah you as a filmmaker you know oh, these yes, things. Yes. it's yeah. certainly it's certainly transformed uh filmmaking aerial shots so and and those kinds of things one thing that i i'm very very conscious about the noise that these things make for me that's a big a big big factor uh -huh. so when i fly the drone when i'm when i travel somewhere and i fly the drone i always have that feeling that i'm mm. going on someone's nerves that someone is annoyed by what i do so when lots of people are around i'm way more hesitant to fly it uh as if i was alone so the noise factor the I noise factor too. is for me especially the small ones cuz they have a higher pitched sound cuz the propellers need to spin faster cuz they are shorter so you you really don't get that i mean they they you don't really hear them when they are i don't know uh, 50 meters above you but um until then i'm yeah i fly this thing way less than i thought i would for that reason alone so Me we've too. got over now haven't we because that when these things first became popular um uh, there was a big th there was a, a a big trend in drone photography um and not just photography but videography mm. as well and it was you mm. know e every youtuber had a drone and was flying it uh, mm. and, and making yeah the, uh, lots and lots of, of uh, really quite um, mesmerizing uh, really right quite good shots actually yeah mesmer that's a really good yeah. word for it mesmerizing and uh i i, f I feel maybe uh, maybe uh, from my sample of one just what i tend to see um i feel that we've got past that initial peak fad you know uh, of drones and maybe now there's something you know especially with some of the regulation that's coming in 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 a lot of countries certainly in the uk it is i understand it, it uh, in the us that you know that a lot of regulation coming in now as well uh and that it feels like that we're sort of settling down to normal drone use <laughs> whatever <laughs> normal drone use actually means i think privacy is is probably the big um kind of elephant in the room because you know we'll talk about amazon's uh release of a in-home drone that flies around your home to kind of check on you know did you leave your stove on is somebody wandering around the house what the hell's the dog doing whatever it is the, do the dog's chewing up the drone <laughs> so pri privacy it's really interesting the privacy thing i find really interesting mm. and i know the situation is different everywhere around yeah. the world because there are different cultural expectations and different legal frameworks for it uh, today i had to download an app onto my phone that specifically lets the government track me where i've been really now they say it they say it's anonymized it's all oh, to do it's, it's the covid oh, track okay. and trace um, and I had to go, I went somewhere today, it, it was into uh, a public shop, uh, and uh, they now have, no sorry, it wasn't a shop, it was a restaurant cafe place. And uh, it is now a legal requirement for those establishments in the UK to track everybody. Oh, yeah. 
uh, and to be able to trace them and the uh, and the way of course that they choose to do it it's, ma- it's many many weeks later than originally advertised but the uk government's track and trace app is now out and i had to down- download that today so what would you do with that i mean you know, we talk about privacy with drones it's like you'd have to be a hell of a good drone pilot to get a picture of a single individual doing something specific wouldn't you well with, <laughs> the, like, with, with really? the camera with the advances in camera technology and those things we're talking 4k easily we're talking some drones now have a zoom zoom lens on their camera so it's not that hard anymore Honestly, if you wanted to, whatever, look in in your neighbor's uh, house, then you could possibly or probably do that. Have either of you ever been challenged by somebody when you're out flying your drone that thought you were up to no no good? No, No, but I'd say we're probably uh, more sensitive uh, (laughs) to the uh, effect on Mm. the GP than... Mm -mm. You know, th- mm. then many Most, people yeah. are. I'm very sensitive to it mm. because I feel I very sensitive. Also, don't mm. fly it mm. around here, uh, around buildings, because you can't. There's uh, a, mm. there's regulation here that gives you That's good. a very um, well. It gives you a framework on where you can fly and where you cannot fly. And um, question is, is is it enforceable? That's a completely different question, but. In general, I'm trying to be very sensitive about that. <coughs> same, same with as Jeremiah. I think I think I mean, that's I, very I wise. I feel yeah. kind of neutral on uh, uh, on all manner of of these technologies. You know, like everything, they could be and are uh, certainly abused. Um, you know, the military uses of drones have transformed mm. warfare, and it'll be military uses of robots that they're experimenting with. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I guess if soldiers don't have to fight wars, but it'll be robot wars, then maybe we'll have our wars without anybody getting hurt uh, directly. I, you know, I don't know. Um, the, the, or not, you know, or not. I, you know, I, I also think that the, you know, the mind sweeping, very, very interesting uses, yeah. forest fires here in Mm. Uh, in California, that would be extraordinarily helpful if, there, if you know, you could pinpoint uh, a little smoke and fly into yep. it and mm. alert uh, automatically. Th- that could save, you know, literally thousands of lives. Um, delivery of medicine, sometimes very, very difficult uh, to out-of-the-way places. There's a lot of really great use for, for a drone and great use for the photographic aspects of it. And there's use, you know, there's abuse use as well. Mm. Uh, it really depends who's using it, what the social dynamics are within the culture we're using it. So I'm, I'm kind of neutral. I'm fascinated by, obviously, li- like all of us, what are the developments? I mean, you have these Skydio drones that you don't even really have to be any manner of being a pilot. I mean... You can program it uh, to follow you, go low, go high, return, whatever. Um, and some others require a lot of skill. I made a movie, you know, oh God, in the uh, mid 90s or early 90s, I forget. But we used, uh, I had a, 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 a helicopter, must have been three feet across, maybe the blades were six feet across, a big honking helicopter with a proper pilot flying it down through narrow, narrow canyons. And it was a, you know, it's it's quite an elaborate deal. Now you can do it yourself. Um, I think it tends to be now overused um, because it's so cheap to do. But getting a getting a camera cinematically to move like a dolly, really smooth and low and come around is is a tool and a very effective yep. one if you're using it appropriately to storytell. Um, you know, it always comes down to who's using it what are their intentions what are the social dynamics what do people feel and come coming up with some kind of um relative uh, relatively acceptable rules so that it fits within um our society to improve it of course that's really so case. adrian you earlier said that um that we have reached sort of an S- sort of a normal kind of thing after it's being very overused in the mm. beginning. Why Why do you think um, it's not as interesting anymore? I, I think th- there was a wow factor at first. Um, and, and so I, I guess 
I guess I may be, yeah, you know, because photography is is one of my hobbies. You know, a lot of the stuff I consume uh, on the internet is is related to photography, and 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 a, a proportion of that is YouTube. And there were there were a lot of YouTubers who are using drones for you know, uh, you know, way beyond a, a, what you would traditionally call an establishing shot. Yeah, you know, doing it for the fact that it was a drone shot. And I think what I'm seeing now is that those kind of people um, uh, and yeah are, are perhaps perhaps more naturally editing in those mm. drone shots rather than making the so drone that's, shots a that's feature. That's the thing that I noticed in the beginning, that people were pretty much only doing the dolly kind of shots, the circle around something kind of shots, and they were very self-serving. They weren't really serving anything uh, as in telling a story or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mm. while... It was, hey, I've got and a drone. And while that was very wowy <laughs> in the beginning, yeah, it, it, it gets old very quickly if that's the only thing that, yeah. you, that you show, I think. Do you know what? I do really like that. I have to say one of my favorite uses for camera drones is, uh, is the footage they now get from the World Rally Championship. Oh, really? Okay. So I I don't know that so uh, I don't know how many of our listeners will be will be interested in the World Rally Championship, but this is a, you know, for those that don't know of it, it is a, f- a form of motor racing that takes place over long distances, over unmade roads, out in the middle of nowhere, and they go to mm. snowy places, they go to sandy places, they go all over the all over the world. And uh, in the last few years, drones have taken over from helicopters and you can tell the difference because the drones can get in much closer and they can follow the cars in different places where the helicopters can't get to. I mean, you, you know, years ago, you'd have a helicopter that would be hovering off the side of a cliff you know, and the cars would be driving along some little track mm. along the side of a cliff. And you could tell it was a helicopter shot, but it could only mm. follow so far. The drones can go you know, tons of different places and the, 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 the turning circle of a drone is, is very much smaller smaller than a helicopter and so you can get these really dramatic sweeping shots if the car's doing a handbrake turn around a hairpin bend the drone can follow it and stuff like that it's it's okay. very impressive very impressive use of drones they so, must do that with cycling as well do they oh yeah I definitely imagine. Uh, I don't know. I had, do you know what? I, I haven't mean, watched was, a cycle race a few, on the TV for some time. A few years ago, there was this one thing at a ski race. Do you remember that? Where a drone, like a big heavy camera drone, was hovering over the, the ski slope. And it had a mm. malfunction, a critical malfunction. And it dropped it crashed, onto it? Yeah. the snow. And we're talking a chunky piece of equipment. And it dropped onto the snow just like a few milliseconds after the skier had gone through. So it would have... It's probably hurt the skier quite a bit if if it mm. had hit him. So, where, uh, yes, we, we, it, I mean that. So so we, yeah, these things do need oh, safety, definitely, don't they? Definitely. <laughs> um, now that you can carry bigger lenses on a drone and have a little bit more reach mm. with the drone, I think it's probably or make a bit it smaller safer, in total because the I, cameras are getting smaller and getting getting more powerful at smaller sizes. So maybe that's another way. Um, what 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 are the kind of the bigger drones, Jeremiah, that you uh, that you have contact with in context of uh, producing a movie. Well, they don't, the the bigger drones, and you know some of them are DGI or Scotty, but they they tend to have eight uh, yeah. eight rotors, and They're they carry very, like very red heavy. cameras, like that big. kind of stuff. Yeah, they ca- they'll carry basically any camera yeah. you can put on it. Uh, they're v- they're very very good. They tend to use two, often three operators: one for the drone, maybe one for the yaw, and one for the pitch. It really do you see how them shrinking the over time? Are. Uh, sure, I think yeah. everything does. Um, you know. Um, including our consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so so but, uh, <laughs> I think the ca- the cameras get smaller, don't they? But the lens, the, the glass tends to get bigger and 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 heavier then as well. So you know. It's, but there, there's new designs, and you know, a lot of it is just lightweight. And I mean, they'll come up with some very very uh, effective ways to to shrink it. Again, shrinking it may may not be as Great a thing if you're in heavy wind. You may want a heavier drone, a bigger drone, one with a lot more AI to kind of keep it stable in high winds. High winds are, of course, the anathema to a drone operator, um, certainly a consumer-based DJI um, is is going to be thrown around radically in wind. Um, so 
you know, the big ones, and we can start like, you know, the biggest drones that, that uh, we are aware of are, you know, the bomb carrying drones that fly at 20,000 feet um, mm. and are controlled by, you know, people in these little huts in Vegas all around the world. It's almost mind boggling. Uh, to think of this, and you know, conversely, all of this is coming out of the military. You have these um, tiny little drones for individual soldiers, so that instead of raising your head above the foxhole, they'll just throw up a drone and check out the battlefield. Um, uh, so, you know, using it as some kind of spy safety mechanism in war. Of course, all this technology is war, 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 which is very unfortunate, but. Um, it seems that that's the, a lot of the innovation in drone technology has come out of the kind of um, global arms race and um, then adapted backwards for surveillance and then finally that's photography. That's where a lot of money is. Um, the, the other thing that mm. I see, I mean, probably one of the main uses, and uh, we have talked about this, is entertainment. So we're talking aerial photography, videography. Um, but the one thing that I've also seen, and they're still making an effort to make this more of a mainstream thing, is to use drones as the entertainment themselves in like drone racing, these kind of things. So I've seen uh, uh, a drone race where they converted yeah. an arena uh, into like a whole set of tunnels with lights in them and different obstacles and things. And then the drone pilots have, have these goggles on and they see what the drone sees. They are virtually on the drone and then they do they race like with i don't know 30 40 50 miles an hour through these tunnels um and the drones the drones very quickly turn into something that you just um that just you replace them as they die because they fly into something or they they are in combat you <laughs> yeah, know where's the, where's the jeopardy in that so we've talked we've talked a little bit about uh uh, about the uh, e-racing so uh, so when the world locked down and you couldn't do motor racing anymore and you started work, running simulated races with real yeah you know, on the television with mm -hmm. with real um with real racing drivers competing against essentially gamers um mm -hmm. and that actually having caught a little bit of, of of some of those that was that was actually reasonably compelling to watch and and that got me thinking about the jeopardy angle because uh, but you you because you might say that a lot of racing, be it car racing or boat racing or whatever, or, or horse racing even, is that it's one of the elements that makes it exciting is is the risk. And there is no risk of when you're doing there's a risk. simulated you are, stuff. Your risk to lose oh, your expensive a... uh, racing drone. Yeah. yeah. Is it like not, Robot yeah. Wars? Really are they allowed risk, to that's soup that's up that's the that. drones and put I armor I don't really on them and stuff? I don't know it that well, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to have little, <laughs> uh, little uh, tiny military drones that have little little projectiles that they can throw at others or maybe little nets that they <laughs> throw into the other drones <laughs> propellers maybe yeah or little little laser thermometers on them they can tell whether you got COVID <laughs> or not <laughs> have any of have any of you seen um uh something that is coming on uh, not necessarily to replace fireworks but to enhance different night celebrations with sometimes up to hundreds of drones all programmed together to work in a kind of pattern or form uh, that is quite astounding and looks very complicated in terms of of coding but but is uh very effective with lights hundreds on it. or thousands um, i've seen a display from japan that where they had these drones that would have lights on them and then form patterns in the sky and they would write in the mm. sky and show oh, oh. even moving <laughs> scenes and those drones i think there's like a lot of autonomy built in and they talk to each other and they build this swarm that uh, then takes on shapes without clashing into each other um that is yeah that's uh, yeah that's pretty awesome that's another form of entertainment so it's also if you imagine if you have you know uh 8K cameras on a thousand drones moving across the oh. city, high, low, and everywhere else. <laughs> We're back to dystopia. I think, I but, think the uh, social acceptance will be a bit of an issue with uh, things going <laughs> all the time, and then you have a hundred of them around you. I think either that or people 
Unless they're quiet. If they they're make, quiet. make it a Pokemon game, right? Make it an intrinsic part of a Pokemon <laughs> game, and everybody will go out and buy them, and everybody will accept them. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, um, well, it, it's a generational thing, isn't it? So you know, my my kids love love Pokemon Go, right? On a phone, they're always wanting to. They're, they're still a little bit too young to have phones, so the, uh, they always want to borrow a phone to 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 play Pokemon Go on it and stuff like that. They don't give us. A thought to, to privacy or anything like that. They, they, mm. they, they're growing up in a world where privacy isn't doesn't exist mm. so yeah what are, what are they ever going to care okay about before this before this goes too dystopian let's go and uh, switch over to our picks of the week and i've had a quick look <laughs> i was saying that as a positive thing i'm going to change my i want to change my pick of the you week. want to change your pick of the week okay just, put it in our yeah our because i just i just but but amazing. I've had a quick look through those and um, I think Jeremiah's are probably the most dystopian. So Jeremiah, you go first. Your first pick <laughs> of the week. So we have those out of the way. Um, is uh, drone related? Here is a personal reconnaissance drone, the Black Hornet PRS. That's right. What is, what is that? Tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, propellers fold up fits in your belt and it is in fact a military drone that I, I, I believe they've bought up to 9,000 of them right now and uh, it's you know it's used for personal surveillance etc um, you could imagine if you That's weaponize these scary. things with gas or or, or mm. I mean, you know that <laughs> I, I don't have to project forward what the possibilities are but these are Highly efficient, probably very well made, very small uh, drones uh, that uh, are fundamentally military. All right, let's quickly move on to the second pick of you. You have two here. Um, and it's also a military drone. So that's right. It, it's, a, it's a version of, of uh, drones by Skydio, which is a very interesting company making very interesting drones. Uh, I do not have one, but, but I've... Um, they, they are quite amazing in that they use a lot of AI in terms of, of processing and, and the ability for uh, very low-skilled people to fly them in very dynamic ways. Uh, it's a reconnaissance drone. It looks quite substantial. And, uh, but I believe they're being, they're, they are using these kinds of things for building inspections as well, uh -huh. and bridge inspections, and these the kinds of things. The website mentions payload, um, and under payload, we're talking about six 4K HDR color navigation cameras with 16 times zoom yeah, that's big. and 360 degree super right. zoom technology. It also has a FLIR. Boson 320 thermal imager with eight times zoom, so it's a thermal camera as well. So be worried. So that, be that, would, that worried. would be able to <laughs> find you when you are out in the wilderness delivering drugs at night, and they are um, they're gonna pinpoint you that way. That's still your drugs. Mm. <laughs> and there we go. Well, that's as you do, as you do. I don't want the I don't want the army stealing my drugs. As you do. <laughs> um, let me throw mine in briefly and it's not drone related but um here's one that i recently came across there's someone who shot a photo of andromeda mm -hmm. of the galaxy um with a tilt shift uh, with a tilt adapter so the video i mean we'll we'll put the link in the show notes you have to really see that photo because you know what the tilt effect does it makes things look small and it it, it simulates shallow depth of field and then your brain looks at it and looks like a macro shot and you just you just read it as being very very small so um that photographer tried it with artificial ways with um doing like just just blurring parts of the photo as you as you do with a fake tilt effect but it didn't come out so he built a tilt adapter and if we look here on the website um it's a very very strong angle he put in there i mean we're looking at almost like 40 degrees of tilt here which is massive but he had to use it uh, to in order to yeah to get that effect and he then put this up on his telescope and i mean the the photo is wow. mind-blowing it really mm, is because wow. it makes andromeda look like like you can put it in the palm of your hand 
That is very, very <laughs> good. So um, everyone, yeah. I recommend you have a look at the website. So that was mine. Um, Imar, have you put your new one in there? It's on top because I couldn't find. Um, I'm going to keep both of them, actually, because I want to um, mention the Argenta map that one of our people in Discord put into the, one of the chats in there. And I hadn't heard of that one. And it is brilliant. It's, it's I a love black it. and white. It's just I, iPhone app. Yeah. For photography. Point and yeah. shooty. Yeah. 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 And you can't do anything. All you have to do is just press go when you're ready. So it's yep, lovely. It actually. is fun. I've, I hadn't known about um, this. So thanks for the tip. Mm. Um, it's fun. Uh, it's a Alfano is is uh, you um, the name of the guy, but I don't know his name. Okay, okay. And the other one is actually not drones, but almost. So it's just a YouTube clip. It's there at the oh, very I'm top. Oh, I'm copying of, it of right now. Let's see. There. Yeah, I can't get it to place yeah, in the it's right coming place. Up. So this is an artist called Aideen Barry, and this was one of her. Um, most kind of well-known pieces and it's called Flight Folly and um, you can see why the drones reminded me of it now. Oh, it's a bunch of <laughs> helicopters. Mm. Very clever. But she's got the remote control to all the helicopters in her hand and she's, it's its amazing. It's really it is, well done. Oh, and it's a dress. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That is amazing. Love it. That's great. I like that. Yeah, that's fantastic. She's awesome, oh, Aideen Barry. Look up her, all of her work is amazing. So. Brilliant. Love it. It's cool. cool. Yeah. We didn't think no. of this. No. Mm. I, I had, I, uh, no, no, there's I, a good use for drones. Fashion. Yeah. Fashion, fashion drones. drones. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't art. think we are too far away from that. <laughs> oh, art. Well, well, okay, yes. But it is a dress. So. It is a dress. So it's both. Yeah. I think it's a parachute, actually. <laughs> a ah, parachute silk. A, a dress made yeah. out of a parachute. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and lifted by helicopters. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, I like that. It's fabulous. Yeah. Okay. And... Last but not least, here is Adrian's. Yeah, well, okay, so this is a bit of fun. Um, so this is two friends of mine who made a YouTube video called Bring Drony Home. Okay. <laughs> so so the reason they had to bring Drony home is because they had previously lost Drony. <laughs> <laughs> the drone and rescue operation. The, the, yeah, the, 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 so so the uh, two friends of, of mine, Simon and Dave, um, they they are uh, uh, adventurous kinds, and and they 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 um, they also are, are well trained in doing things like climbing and and uh, and lots of things to do with ropes. And so so although this looks crazy, this video, they are mm. actually fully qualified um, uh, people, and and so they they are actually doing it with all the safety. Mm. Um, they had to they had to, to to go over these really rickety bridges and out into the tiny rock off the sea that you couldn't get to apart from using ropes to rescue their drone, which they'd crashed there. Oh um, if I, I can't remember, I th- Chris, you and I have talked about this before, but th- these are the same two friends who who made uh, a, a, another film called uh, one shot inching down where they they went to uh, some underground oil storage tanks in scotland a bit you know huge space and they they lived down there for 24 hours in the oh. pitch black and they took this amazing large format photography shot um, and they developed they developed a print of this thing and the print was i think six feet by four feet as they developed it and they had to use um inflatable paddling <laughs> pools as they're developing <laughs> tanks and and stuff mm. like that i'd I know Chris I'm pretty sure Chris you I and I have spoken have, yeah. about that before but but uh, uh I don't think uh, yeah not um uh, anyway they they're lunatics but the best kind of lunatics and they would love it if I said that about them so go watch their go watch this video called bring drony home because it's it's loads of fun All right so <laughs> we have all the links to what we've shown here in the show notes of course um and I think that <coughs> is another episode in the can the impact of drones i think you've converted me ha- a little have bit. we have we managed to get your skepticism I think, I think down? yeah i think maybe yeah uh, yeah you i've definitely taken it down a peg yeah. i still don't want my parcels delivered by drones. maybe future generations i mean you know we <coughs> adapt we evolve so maybe future generations mm-hmm. will evolve with a with a notch filter built in their ears so they can't hear the drones that loudly anymore you know <laughs> 
maybe yeah. possibly so that sounds that sounds like hard work why don't you choose battery powered fans <laughs> i think um, i think if you if you if you accept the the direction of travel with regards to personal privacy which i know is difficult to accept uh, but but if you accept that then the the, the noise is really the only other downside I well think. the noise might be an advantage um, you hear them when they're around you know yeah, yeah, that doesn't sound right to me. You live in a you live in a, you live in the countryside, Chris, and, and I live in a relatively quiet place. I don't I, I don't think I'd want a bunch of yeah. drones around all the time making noise. They'd be annoying. me neither. Not at this point, and not with the noise they make. So anyway, I think that's it for this episode. The impact of drones. Thanks very much for being here, for watching, for listening. Um, of course, we're also online on Twitter. TFOP now on the Insta TFOP now we have our Discord everyone join our Discord which is loads of fun I really enjoy the Discord at the moment there's loads Me of good stuff going on it's brilliant we have a showcase channel where we get to show off some interesting photos and then discuss <coughs> them we have like general channels off an off topic channel for things that don't fit and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little community forming there and I'm a great fan of it so Everyone join us, tfttf.com slash join tfob. Link is in the show notes. And with that, bye-bye until next time. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, all. Take care.